Okay. So which was the remedy we Yeah, all settled. <coughs> which was the remedy we started in the last class? Huh? No, no, no. La which was the last remedy? Coculus. Okay. So any... I mean, coculus is what uh, we discussed. Before coculus? Huh? Mesirian. And we also spoke of uh, rhododendron. Rhododendron. So any quick questions in whatever we have spoken? So rhododendron, mesirian, and of course last, what was done was? Uh, coculus. Okay. So we'll uh, start with a brand new remedy. I'll just share a small case. And then we'll go ahead. See, this class is for final years. Allah. So I'll just narrate a simple case and you can start giving your inputs. Okay. See, three, four days back, now uh, you know the weather in Bangalore. There has been a lot of uh, fluctuation. You see a lot of rains, weather is cold and uh, sometime in the day it is also sunny. So all the three weathers we are seeing in a day. And many kids are coming to our clinic with a uh, lot of uh, respiratory infections. They are coming down with acute problems, fever, cold cough. Okay. So three days back we had this uh, small child, you know, a, a baby boy who was around uh, three and a half years old and he was brought to the clinic and his complaint was he had continuous and severe cough, non-stop cough. To the extent that you know the other patients who were waiting before this child, they only said, you please go, consult the doctor first, we'll go later. And as a doctor, as a homeopathic doctor sitting inside the cabin, even I was a little disturbed. Disturbed in the sense that was the kind of cough. You know, it was continuous non-stop cough. Okay? Done? So this is a small case that had come to my clinic. He had gone to a very good pediatrician. He was prescribed some medicines that advised him to nebulize. Okay, this was a small scenario. As a fine day student, what comes to your mind? Child was coughing non-stop, okay? And uh, what remedies or what uh, diagnosis? You are also a student studying medicine. You are a student studying pediatrics. Allah. So you can either talk in terms of diagnosis of the condition or you can talk of diagnosis of a remedy. Meaning, what, what homeopathic remedies come to your mind in this situation? Trust me, it's a serious thing. Many times we have people coming to us with arthritis, diabetes for 20 years, hypertension for 10 years, arthritis for 8 years. You have a lot of time in such cases. Okay? You can take some time, you can work out the case, you can ask them to come back or you can prescribe. Now in this case, this case you don't have so much of time because you understand the seriousness. Child is coughing continuous, non-stop cough. Then, and he has already consulted a pediatrician and then they come back to us. We can't even tell them, sorry, we can't help you, please go back to the pediatrician. Fine? Fine? So they have gone and then they come back to you. So what, what comes to your mind? I have given you two options. You can either look at the medicine part or you can look at the material medical part. I will leave it to you. Whichever is easy, you can pick it up. Start telling something. At least, let there be an interaction. Hmm? Okay, you can think of Del Camera. I know what made you think of Del Camera because the first statement I gave you was to misguide you. What was the statement I gave you? See, it was a general statement telling you about the weather. But Del Camera, do you think has that kind of a cough? which is so continuous, so annoying, so disturbing, so violent, so deep. Yes, ailments was something that was uh, little misguiding for us. Because you have uh, different weathers in a day. Probably that made you think of Del Camera. But is the character of cough 
that of dull cameras you see more and more serious situation here good to start with uh, you know dull could be a remedy beautiful good any other uh, inputs very good epicac one second we'll go one by one initially i said answer now i'm telling you please hold on uh, that is the beauty of uh, jhmc students okay now what is uh, the second remedy that is coming up here is epicac good what made you think of epicac vomiting fine okay see epicac is again a beautiful remedy for uh, cough for asthma in children very very important remedy cough which ends in vomiting more than vomiting in epicac you have more of nausea more of nausea you will have the typical uh, white coated tongue clean sorry clean tongue good you are all uh, awake and aware so clean tongue okay angry child done child will be very angry and of course you will have that cough good epicac any other remedies somebody was talk uh, talking of stanum now what is it that is missing here in uh, this particular child okay there is a paroxysm of cough in stanum and stanum you know it is paroxysm of 3 correct but is it paroxysm of 3 here no cough is continuous okay and stanum what is the other very important symptom gradual okay the onset more than the onset they will have bad debility bad weakness very 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 prominent in stanum debility okay here the child was coughing continuous one more remedy okay good stricta good drosera okay rumex pongia antim tart very good was that cupramet cuprum see i have got nothing against whatever you are trying to tell me starting from antim tart okay you are talking of stricta beautiful drosera okay but this child had already consulted an other homeopath luckily that homeopath had uh, sent a prescription meaning he had already given drosera drosera was tried it did not help okay cuprum is a beautiful remedy which is having this paroxysm non stop cough cough to the extent child turns blue okay there is hardly any time to take in air or leave out uh, carbon dioxide non stop cough to the extent the child will turn blue is cuprum i had cuprum in my mind you know in this case that was the cough okay but one thing that i prescribed here in this case with due respect to drosera antim tart how is it an antim tart okay you will have that death rattle fine with cough you see like you know there is also uh, breathlessness okay there is difficulty in breathing and then and you the chest is filled with phlegm and you can hear that rattling sound you need not keep your stethoscope you can hear it and antim tart is a very clingy chair okay fine and it doesn't want you to look at okay very irritable when you look at him he gets very irritated and a clingy chair they they cling to the mother so these things were missing in this child okay so antim tart drosera cuprum all these things slowly i started rolling out but i am happy as a final year student you could think of so many remedies okay now one rare remedy i thought of here which i studied way back remember this scenario when you have this any child who has got continuous cough and if the cough is ending in vomiting one simple remedy that should come to your mind is cocos cacti this is a rare remedy please make a note go back to borik go back to clark after the class and you explore this particular medicine and the medicine's name is cocos cacti very rare remedy okay but indication is this cough which is very paroxysmal and cough which ends in vomiting beautiful indication one line indication okay it's a very rare rare remedy done so after cocos cacti you know what do you what do you ask the patient to do meaning what do you ask the patient to do i had given him a dose of cocos cacti here in my clinic what should be your confidence what should be 
the uh, instructions you give to your patient. So ask him, please call me after half an hour. Okay? And if your remedy is right, what would have happened in next half an hour or 45 minutes? Child was sleeping. Child, you know, next uh, 30, 40 minutes, once they went home, they called, Sir, uh, uh, beta sorai. Then, no? you understand? Now, this is what a right homeopathic medicine can do. It's, it's not a constitutional medicine. It's a very rare, simple remedy based on a very acute totality. Cocos cacti. Okay? Done? And next day again, he calls me. Next day evening, he calls me and says, Sir, our uh, thoda kasi hai. Okay? I had given him two packets. One packet was Cocos cacti. CC. The other packet I had written on the cover, it was CM. What is CM? Cupramet. Because Cupramet also was coming very close. Okay? So I told them, on SOS basis you can call me and we'll discuss and we'll decide. So next day evening dad calls and says, Sir, abhi thoda kasi hai. So should we give CC, CM or should we continue with PL? How do you decide? These are all the practical situations you'll be facing tomorrow and you should be ready. And my job is making you people ready for the big uh, task. So should, we, should I continue with PL, should I give him CC or should I give him CM? Why PL? No, no, see, good, I, I have nothing against. How do you decide? What are the questions you ask? How, how is he compared to yesterday? See, patients, parents, child, they might be a little panicky. Sir, abhi kasi hai. Like in, when compared to yesterday, the day he came to my clinic, the severity, how is it? Ducks are 80 percent se upar kam hai. You are getting my point? So, from morning, he was absolutely fine. He had his food, everything. He was playing. Abhi sham thoda kasi. But they are apprehensive because we have given two packets as emergency. So that will be acting on their mind. Should I give the emergency or not? Is their question. So what is your uh, uh, understanding here? 80% is better. He is eating, he is moving around. And evening, small bout of cough. So should we jump into cocos cacti or should we jump into cupramate? No. Wait. But give the patient the liberty to call and to keep informed. Fine? Okay, now don't worry, we continue karo, jo bottom mein diya hai. If required, you please call back. Then we'll discuss and decide which medicine has to be given. Okay, give them the freedom that they, are, they can call you at any time. Done? So that we can also decide if cocos cacti is required or not. So a single dose of cocos cacti. Last two evenings they have not called me. They have not called me because the child is better. Okay? <laughs> Right? No, no, see that is a kind of uh, confidence they should have in you. Done? Okay? See, coffee is something we are getting uh, so much in last uh, week and 10 days. Few cases we have been very successful, few we have not been successful. Uh, yesterday my wife was discussing a case, uh, you know. Uh, he was on allopathy for his uh, child. Uh, she had cough. She was not better. So they came to us. We are also giving medicines. The child is not better. You know what the father told? Madam, uh, we were giving allopathy. They, you know there are all uh, chemicals and there are a lot of other effects. Child was not better. We are also giving homeopathy. Child is the same. But I still want to continue with homeopathy because uh, you know there are no side effects and I'm, I know my child is safe in your hands. You are getting my point. Then we have not cured the child. You know the way you talk and he was very happy. Whenever we call, you pick up the phone. Okay, meaning at least you guide us what to do. So that availability, the way you talk, the way you deal with patients, all that also matters. See, in this case, my medicines did not help her. But what was the confidence the patient's father had in us is that you are approachable, fine. You pick up calls whenever we call you, you will guide us. And your medicines, there are no side effects. We have not cured the case. Same with allopathy and homeopathy in this case. But father wants to continue with us because of the other reasons. So what I am trying to tell you as a budding doctor, you should give that confidence okay, and you should be available to the patient. 
This is a beautiful profession, okay? A service-oriented profession and you should be there for them, guiding them. Sometimes uh, medicines don't work. Don't work in the sense we have given a wrong simulimum. Then emergencies, we ask them to get them nebulized. They have to do it. There's nothing wrong. Okay, there's nothing wrong. We don't go against, against, uh, against allopathy. We've got nothing, absolutely nothing wrong. But we should know when to refer, when to keep in the interest of the patient. Okay, we'll get back. So you have given me a lot of uh, remedies for cough in uh, today's class. So this case improved with cocos cacti. Okay, I'm not dealing with cocos cacti. I don't know if uh, it is there in your syllabus. Please do read, it's very important. See, we'll talk of uh, a very important remedy. Any clue from this particular image? Can you think of which is the remedy that we are going to discuss? Must be uh, one of your friends, she knows, she is smiling because I had called her yesterday and I just wanted to confirm if this medicine is done or not because I didn't want to repeat a remedy and I appreciate the fact she did not answer because she knew that she already knows the remedy that I am going to deal. Okay, good. Thank you for not revealing and being uh, honest. Okay, we'll get back. We'll get back. Uh, this is something you would have seen in your pharmacy. Hope the image is clear. Okay. When you don't answer, I feel the image is not clear. Huh? Camera? Clear. As much as size on the Should I uh, close this curtain? Yeah. Hello. Lock more body. It's better now? Okay. Yeah. So, after all this exercise, what is expected? <laughs> you answer. We have made the image clear. Huh? Okay, we have made see. I mean, uh, this is a remedy uh, which is prepared by skunk. S-K-U-N-K. Okay. Uh, the dilution of these medicines are prepared from the liquid contained in the anal glands of skunk. See, this is uh, uh, an animal which is, uh, I mean, I was just Google, I was just searching in Google and it says uh, this is what is seen in the uh, US and whenever it is in danger, it will release a liquid, a discharge from the anus, you know, which is uh, uh, very powerful. The? So this is what it does. Okay. So in homeopathy, Dr. Herring, uh, father of American homeopathy, right? So he was the one who proved this particular remedy. And uh, the preparations were made from the liquid, from the inner gland of this particular animal. And the remedy is? The remedy is? Squilla. No, it's not Squilla. The remedy is Mephitis. Mephitis putorius. This is the full name of this particular remedy. So next 20-25 minutes, we will try to understand mephitis in detail. We will try to understand what mephitis is. See, mephitis again is a very small remedy. We will not typically go from head to toe. Okay? We will not typically go from head to toe. There are few areas in mephitis which are very, very important. We will try to focus on those particular areas. So what is that first area? Very good. So whenever mephitis comes to your mind, the first area, the first fear of action will be respiratory. Okay? So when you talk of respiratory, then there are again two things. What are those two, two things? Very good. Upper respiratory and lower respiratory. Okay? Mephitis is a remedy which has an affinity for the lower respiratory tract. Okay? You don't see sneezing, you don't see cold, you don't see nose block in mephitis. You see more of lower respiratory tract getting affected. Okay. So moving ahead, our my uh, plan for today's class will be focusing on the respiratory symptoms of mephitis. That will be one. And second objective is whatever is remaining. You know, whatever is characteristic in mephitis, we'll try to explain it under one heading. We will typically not go from head to toe. Okay. So, 
Just looking at the image, again taken from Google Images, what do you understand? Cold water. What is this man doing? Bathing. Good. This man is bathing. So you have one very important symptom. Desires bathing. Desires bathing. Now what is the extension of the symptom? Desires bathing in cold water. Cold water. Desires bathing in cold water. Okay. Any remedies you would like to think of here? The only other remedy we have is phytalaka. The only other remedy mentioned in our repertory, desires bathing cold water in, is mephitis and phytolaka. Okay. Any other remedies quickly you would like to compare as a final student? Very good. Good, good. I'm happy. Yeah, good. So exactly opposite. We are talking about desires and nephritis. For our comparison, we are looking at remedies which have aversion. So you have antimonium crude, sulfur, huh? ammonium car, very good, ammonium car, few remedies. Okay. Disease bathing. Many times we have uh, parents coming and telling, no, my son is always in the bathroom, playing with water, pouring water, okay, bathing. Fine. It is not an OCD. But they enjoy playing in water. That is tarantula. Desires bathing is tarantula. Desires bathing in cold water is phytolaca and mephitis. Aversion is what you have already <coughs> told. Okay. So this is one very important mental symptom. Second very important thing, looking at the image again, you can start. Huh? Good. Eye strain. Complaints which comes up from eye strain. Over straining of eye. Okay, for example, here, uh, looking at the laptop, hmm? the screen time is more, you will have problems. Okay. What remedies generally come to our mind? Ruta. Very good. Good. What is the speciality in Ruta? Fine work. Very good. Fine work. For example, some needle work, where eye has to focus more, eye muscles go into a strain from fine work, like need, uh, what is it? Stitching, needle work. Okay. All those things, yeah, where you know you have to do, yeah, uh, people working in watch, watch factory, minor things, where you have to strain much, there, Ruta can be remedied. Only Ruta? See, anything to do with eye, okay, anything to do with eye, please don't uh, trouble your fascia. The same thing happens, whenever we talk of joints, we always think of? Restaurants and brain. So, I euphrasia is something very important. It's not euphrasia. So, you more of jealousy. We are looking at muscles. Muscles of the eye which go into a strain. Natremia. Natremia. Okay. Ruta, jelsemium are the remedies we can think of. Okay. So, uh, pains from overexertion. Vision is blurred, unable to distinguish letters. Conjunctiva red, eyes hot and painful. This I have taken from uh, Borik's Materia Medica. Okay? Clinical Materia Medica. So, pain from overexertion, very important. Okay? So, this was with eye. Now, we will come to the point which is useful both for your theory and of course for the practice. Okay? So what is the first point I told you? Yes. It is a remedy which mainly has an affinity for lower respiratory tract. So when you are starting, you will start directly with lower respiratory affections. You are not uh, focusing on uh, coryza, sneezing, nose block, etc. A wild guess, what could happen in uh, the lower respiratory tract? What will nephritis do acting on the lower respiratory tract? Huh? Okay, more than pneumonia. Simple, we are talking of conditions, simple conditions. Simple conditions, I mean I know, you are all medicine students, you are talking of big, big things. Simple thing that can come up here is cough. Okay, see cough can be a symptom of pneumonia, cough can be a symptom of uh, pertussis, whatever it is. So simple thing that comes up here is cough. Okay. See, not only cough, 
You also have something very important in uh, nephritis, asthma, asthma. And the third very important thing you can also see is they can have difficulty in breathing, dyspnea. We are looking at the uh, symptoms, conditions, find cough, uh, dyspnea or asthma. Asthma can have both cough and dyspnea, possible, done, okay. So we will uh, go one by one, step by step. Let's explore the cough of mephitis and then we look at asthma and then we look at dyspnea. Okay. See, when you look at cough, when you look at cough, how do we explain cough generally? What are the headings under which we explain cough? Huh? Very good, beautiful. First uh, heading will be ailments from. Why this child is getting cough? See now, if you understand this, this is how you are going to question your patient tomorrow in your clinic. Child comes to you with cough. Okay? Then we question. Since when? Beautiful, nice question. Then? Huh? Okay, we, you are talking of modalities. That will be a little later. Yeah, character of cough. Good, character of cough. When you talk of character, what are you looking at? Okay, you are looking at wet, dry. Okay, you are looking at the paroxysm. You are looking at the sputum, expectoration, if it is wet cough. Okay. And then we are also looking at, uh, you know, the character of cough. Is it uh, deep? Is it loud? Fine. Is it shallow? Is it hollow? Whatever. Okay. Now this is very, very important. See, we have uh, uh, beautiful uh, cases coming up in our clinic. Very recently we had a patient, you know, who had uh, a cough, a peculiar cough, almost for a month or two. And you know what the cough was? <coughs> Whenever he coughs, <coughs> what is this? Correct, what is this? Single. He is not having a continuous cough. <coughs> we heard him and then there will be a gap. And after 5 minutes, 6 minutes, one more cough. <coughs> you are getting my point? Now what is this? What is this? See, how do you look into your repertory? This is also something that is very, very important. So you go to the chapter cough. Under cough, you will be looking into paroxysm. Under that, consisting of single paroxysm. And remedy is right, absolutely right. We have only single remedy having single paroxysm and that is calcarea cough. Life becomes so easy. Huh? Single paroxysm. Okay, calcarea cough. Done? Done? Single paroxysm. But the child we saw, that night, an emergency case at night was continuous paroxysms. What is paroxysm? Which is sudden and uncontrolled attack. Okay. When they, the child had continuous cough and this gentleman has cough. And what is the character of cough? Single paroxysm. Never miss all this PQRS. Okay. Hmm? That is calcarea cough. Done. So we will go ahead and we'll just see the cause, the first heading. Whenever a patient comes to our clinic with cough, the first question is, why? How did it start? Since when it started? In nephritis, the cause could be after drinking. It could be after eating. Reading loud. You know, few of you have this bad habit of uh, reading, reading loud. Only if you read loud, it will enter. Many times your friends would have heard you reading loud and they would have passed their exams. <laughs> Fine? Because you know, there are few students. See, it is our capacity. Each of us, we have our own way of uh, learning. Few, if they, if they study, they will not understand. If others are reading, others are explaining, they understand better. And you will be surprised, few of them, they read with their, uh, what? Head, earphones, headphones. With music. Seriously, I'm not joking. I don't know what is that concentration they have. They're also, you know, doing this and they're keeping the book and they're also studying. Mother, father will be uh, stressed. Boss, what are you doing? Then he will, uh, you know, I'm studying. And they're serious. Fine. But without this, they can't study. Then they're all brilliant students. See, 
this we should have capacity no we cannot concentrate one thing at a time <laughs> sir my fight is please go slow don't bring cases don't explain sir please stick to my fight is no could be one and one more if i only stick to my fight is sir boring sir <laughs> please talk of other remedies please bring cases yes another type see see the greatness of dr haniman we are all different individuals we have our own style our own way and that is the core of homeopathy individualization fine so if some i mean if they are reading loud and then they land up with cough we have some 24 remedies in our repertory mephitis is one okay so what is that i am trying to tell you tomorrow somebody comes to your clinic and tell sir when i read loud i have cough then what is the clue i gave you it is not only mephitis there are 24 other remedies having this as a cause so you should also look at other things what are the other things we look at then we'll ask the question how how is your cough okay in mephitis the cough is is uh, you know deep you see this here it is deep is barking woofing dry cough which suffocates you know why is it suffocating because it is a continuous cough we have another uh, heading coming up it is a continuous cough so they feel suffocated suffocating violent rattling hmm? now the next question is because of this what is happening i have gone through a flow chart so that you students appreciate and understand things better okay so first is cause then we are talking of the character and then we are looking at the effect this is so deep this is so violent so what is happening so what is happening so see so violent so violent is the cough that every time they are coughing they feel it will end their life cough is so violent and so severe that there is a feeling that you know that they are going to uh, die this is the feeling you have so violent feels as if each spell would terminate her life i wanted to ask this as a question but unfortunately i don't know for what reason it has exposed itself now what is this the only other remedy where the cough is so bad that you cough and you feel you are so tired and you feel that's it i am going to die okay see this is how patients come and tell because this is how patient felt when the remedy was proved it's a serious job okay fine for our other friends whether you die or whether you are alive it will not make a difference meaning the uh, syrups the antibiotics might be the same with due respects we have got nothing against we have our own limitations we have referred to alopas fine right? now the beauty is many great alopas they are referring to homeopathy now that is a very nice trend which is coming up because our focus is patient so there are great homeop uh, great alopas who refer patients to homeopathy when we show results they have seen that you showing results and they are very happy to refer the patients to you but you have to show them results very important to show them results you should have knowledge okay you should have that trust you should have that belief only then there will be a mutual understanding you get him a point so cough so when it feels as if each spell would terminate her life to prom and uh, there's another very important thing see child must be raised up for example when the child is lying down child is coughing so much coughing so much which is suffocating so child gets blue in face and child cannot exhale so immediately the child has to be lifted up the child has to be raised up from lying down position from supine position this is mephitis okay now another very important thing this is the thing you know what is it paroxysmal continuous cough and when is this paroxysmal cough more in uh, mephitis it is more at nights it is also there in the day 
but very few very few episodes in the day and many episodes at night nephritis clear very very characteristic this slide speaks a lot about nephritis uh, cough okay see going ahead okay anyway animation is done not done now uh, one of your friend was talking about modalities when is it aggravated it's aggravated singing night lying down and drinking these are aggravating factors okay now with cough there are so much of cough what is happening see i have been trying my best to present it in a very systematic way so that it is easy for you to write in your exams it is easy for you to prove in your clinic okay cause character because of this cough what is happening okay and then we are also looking at the modalities and we are also looking at the uh, concomitants okay so because of the cough there is uh, violent rawness hoarseness and pain in chest vomiting after cough these are few things related to cough and nephritis okay asthma we were talking of asthma the second component under respiratory tract is asthma asthma mainly in drunkards okay your repertory gives only three medicines asthma in drunkards the other two are arsenicum malt and coca if you see here arsenicum malt and coca asthma aggravation night hmm okay another important symptom you have in nephritis is asthma aggravation cold drinks what do what did this under my desires bathing in cold water but here under respiratory under asthma what are we saying asthma aggravation cold water okay so if somebody is drinking cold things and they come out with asthma you can think of nephritis only remedy mentioned in your repertory asthma amelioration cold drinks again a single remedy and that remedy is chamomile chamomile asthma amelioration cold drinks okay any confusion boys clear what is the remedy we are discussing nephritis 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 main focus main uh, sphere of action is respiratory see you should come like a picture this slide that i am trying to show now if you just close your eyes sir showed this first slide second slide this was here that was here that is the kind of pictorial memory you need to have okay then there will be no confusion there will be lot of clarity so under respiratory we focus on cough the first thing cough what were the headings we discuss causation then we spoke of character then we spoke of modalities and then we spoke of other things because of cough okay asthma what was very characteristic two characteristic symptoms in asthma one was one was aggravation after cold drinks good second thing is asthma in drunkards and asthma aggravation night good now the last thing related to respiratory we we had an image there what is it what was the third image first was cough second was asthma third was dyspnea so difficulty in breathing in this particular remedy is mainly from expiration difficult expiration aggravation lying down amelioration rising this is the uh, dyspnea symptom of nephritis okay clear yeah we will uh, go further and we'll just see another very important thing you have in nephritis what do you see in this image choking beautiful good choking why is choking happening okay see everybody who is arid will not choke now what is the pathophysiology behind choking ha huh? ha huh? okay so what happens so food particles is entering into your into the respiratory tract okay so so what is that symptom you have is food goes in the wrong way 
if you look at uh, when you eat the food should enter the food pipe so instead of the food pipe it is entering the air pipe simple let's not complicate so food is going in the wrong way okay now this is a symptom as a fine gas student how will you look this symptom in your report you are getting my point so tomorrow somebody might come and tell you sir i generally choke a lot and you know generally food goes into the air pipe and i have a lot of difficulties i have to cough i i get disturbed yeah symptom is fine now the advantage of repertory the advantage of repertory the advantage of material america we can sir told it is nephritis done it is nephritis so anybody comes to you with this symptom you give nephritis yes or no choking while eating choking while drinking but what is the advantage of looking into repertory repertory will give you wide range of remedies so if you have to look into those wide range of remedies what is the next thing we should know how to reach there reach our destination you know destination is beautiful okay but how do we reach the destination then so where in your repertory this particular rubric is mentioned or how do you hunt in your repertory for this rubric food goes in wrong way think no something you tell no problem huh? very good no problem mouth swallowing good mouth swallowing it is not there no issues good at least you started something keep it up good mouth swallowing then anything is boys internal throat internal throat to external throat no issues into yeah good i'm happy at least you are thinking internal throat mouth at least you are thinking no this which other organ is getting involved here mouth is definitely there agree then you are talking about internal throat but what is the organ that is getting affected okay so there is something called as larynx and trachea okay larynx and trachea so in that food goes to the wrong way chokes easily when drinking and speaking is a symptom of nephritis and the next exercise is we are trying to understand how we look for this in our repertory so larynx and trachea food drops into larynx that is the rubric food drops into larynx and surprisingly you have some 16 to 17 remedies and the remedy which which has three marks the first thing hyos lacasis netremur netremur there three marks bold and then anacardium belladonna calicar nephritis has two marks okay so when somebody comes you should have this clarity where exactly you are going to look into your repertory very important okay now the last part here is convalescence what is this convalescence what is convalescence it is a period where you recover so during this period of recovery there will be lot of weakness okay in your repertory there is a rubric mentioned under generalities convalescence sorry weakness during convalescence okay you have gelsemium you have phosphorus and you have nephritis i don't remember one more remedy the four remedies mentioned gelsemium phosphorus nephritis please go back and uh, look right now i am not able to recall so debility after severe illness is what dr fatak gives so when a cross check in repertory in repertory it is given weakness convalescence during weakness convalescence during okay yeah now the last part of nephritis will be the modalities you know the modalities uh, when we talk of general modalities what are all the general modalities aggravation lying down aggravation night you saw many symptoms getting aggravated at night then cold water cold water in practice you will be writing asthma because cold water generally they enjoy so cold bathing is a general ameliorating factor only asthma cold water aggravates okay icy water bathing in icy water very rare but if at all we get somebody you should think of uh, two remedies one is 
Phytoleca and the other one is Mephitis. Okay. Now the last part of Mephitis will be the clinical application. See, I have given you the symptoms, and as a final year student, as an activity, try to correlate, try to think of in which conditions one can think of uh, Mephitis. Huh? Okay, lower respiratory tract. Like for example, you have croup, you have asthma, it could be strabismus, it could be pneumonia, okay, it could be dyspnea, then pertussis. pertussis, very good, agreed, good, woofing cough, pertussis, then, very, anything else that you can think of? Violent cough. Huh? Violent cough. There are also some sleeplessness, uh, sleep issues in uh, mephitis, okay, so, uh, taken from Clark, you know, to start with uh, asthma, we saw this eye over uh, exertion giving rise to blurring of vision. So that Clark talks of blindness, choking is easy, cold sensitiveness to eye affections of laryngeus, sight weak, woofing cough. This is what Dr. Clark gives in his material medica. Okay? So to sum up, you want to take any remedies for comparison? Drosara? Drosara again has cough, paroxysmal cough, continuous cough. There is cough which ends into vomiting. But what is speciality of Drosara? Okay, there is a feather-like sensation, agreed, good. Then cough which is more after midnight. Cough which is more after midnight. Uh, recently, we had one of our, uh, you know, colleague's uh, daughter. Now, why I am giving you this case is, sometimes we get so mad with uh, uh, the constitution and the other uh, things, we tend to miss simple things. We forget our basics. For this child, I had tried two, two, three remedies, nothing worked, nothing worked. And ultimately, the remedy which worked was uh, Drosara. Again, we retook the case, we made a small totality, cough was more after midnight, continuous cough, and drosara one dose made a huge difference. And same homeopathic medicines meaning, homeopathy last two days did not make any difference. Because I as a homeopath did not give the correct medicine. Okay. And when we gave the correct medicine on the third day, the child was absolutely fine. Mother had sleepless nights. She is a homeopath. She had sleepless nights. Sir, what is happening? Kuch ne hai. To the extent she wanted to consult the pediatrician. Ek opinion lu kya? I said, uh, wait, we have done something wrong. Somewhere we have made some mistake. We are not getting the totality right. Please give me 24 hours more. If she is not better, you take her. Don't uh, wait too much. She is a homeopath. She has seen the child suffering and she says, sir, uh, our medicines are not working, so should I uh, take an opinion? I said, fine, we'll just wait. And after the right remedy, then, uh, you know, sir, you have a WhatsApp message sending, you know, beautiful child is fine, thank you so much, and stuff like that. Done? So, similia similibus curantur. Many times small remedies can make wonders in acute cases. Don't neglect small remedies. Don't neglect small remedies. I gave you an example of Cocos Cacti. I, to conclude the class, I am talking to you about Drosara. Very recent case. Okay. All remedies, they have their own uh, utility. As a homeopath, you should know in which case, which remedy should be given. That is very, very important. Okay. So, to conclude, to close, we spoke of Mephitis. Mephitis having predominant action on the lower respiratory tract. Apart from respiratory, where else you saw mephitis affecting? Eyes. Eyes. Eyes, complaints coming up after over exertion, over strain. Only eyes? Huh? We, we also saw that, you know, they have a desire to bathe in icy cold water and that choking sensation and sleeplessness. Lot of thinking which keeps disturbing the sleep. These are a few things in nephritis. Okay? Any quick questions?
All clear? Boys? In there? Okay. So, mephitis for your exams, they can ask you respiratory symptoms for 5 marks. Okay? Chala, thank you.